Good morning, afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about GTII. Not legal advice. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, feel free to comment. I will, to the extent I can answer questions, I will. Uh, this will be somewhat of a long presentation, so hopefully I will kind of address everybody's questions. This is only my opinions based upon uh, what I've discovered, what I concluded in my own analysis. So do your own uh, due diligence analysis. Uh, if, if mine is helpful to you, then great. Uh, before I started, I wanted to, because I this is what I do, wanted to uh, give you a, three quickies about leadership and because uh, that's what we're going to be talking about mostly here today. Even, even if you're on the right track, you will get run over if you just sit there. You can build a throne out of bayonets, but you cannot sit there very long. And last but not least, if you think you're leading, but when you look behind you and no one's following you, following you, you're just taking a walk. So today I wanted to talk about GTII and, and where we are. And um, I've gotten lots of calls about GTII. I got a communication literally about 15 minutes ago from somebody and their message to me, just so just so the idea is, since I started covering GTII, many people have reached out to me. I've tried to be very careful about what I said. Um, I tried to take to heart what everybody has told me and I try to do my own independent investigation. I realize that GTII is watching and management and council are watching this video because they said they watch my videos. So greetings to you, GTII management and council. Hopefully you will learn something today and hopefully this will be helpful in getting this resolved. So the person who contacted me this morning, just as a throwaway, said that there's billions of dollars of revenue and deals on the table for GTII. That, that was what their statement was to me this morning. And then they referenced, which I thought was interesting that, and you'll understand, I think the timing of this, but I think today GTII named a, a new CAO, COO, and I'd heard some rumor that that was going to occur. Now it happens that I had previously spoken to this, I think it's the same gentleman, the CEO, when he was a consultant, and I actually, and I actually referenced that in one of my communications that we'll talk about. And to to be honest, although the CEO seemed like a very nice guy, when I spoke with him, I was super unimpressed. So the fact that that he is now in that position doesn't change my view of anything. In fact, it makes it even stronger. I think that we are in an extremely bullish position, and I'll explain that. It'll seem kind of contradictory, but, it, but it'll make sense in the end. Um, so to start off, I filed a lawsuit against GTI's officer, officers and directors yesterday. Uh, so it was filed on April 8th, and I'll get through how we got to that point, but that's the starting point. And I noticed today that that consultant was announced to be hired. I presume that's a response to the filing to appear like they were doing something. So as I said, I think this is extremely bullish for GTII. And now I'm going to get into why I think that. So first of all, we start with Alpine. So part of this analysis is Alpine because a lot of people uh, follow Alpine. Alpine is a prime broker for uh, GTII is purported to have engaged in uh, naked shorting, counterfeiting of shares, et cetera. I think the DTCC indicated that they had a concentrated short position. I think it's one of the few times they've indicated that. So we believe there's a short position. And a lot of people believe that if Alpine is forced uh, to cover or they go out of business, that that will trigger a short, uh, short squeeze. However, when that happens or if that happens, that's pure speculation. We don't know when it's going to happen. I have been following Alpine for quite some time on the legal side, and I believe I have a better understanding of the status of Alpine than the management of GTII. 
And so briefly, because this will kind of lead us into the next section, Alpines, there's two actions that are, made, are going on as to Alpine in terms of shutting the business down. One, there is an ongoing disciplinary proceeding in Utah that started on March 18th. I don't know if it's complete because it's confidential, but at some point in time, we will get a decision relating to a disciplinary proceeding that's brought against Alpine. It related to their capital position and their ability to use DTCC and the NSCCC for settlement purposes. They were asked to increase their capital position, a whole uh, rigmarole uh, arose. There was a court action filed and uh, the court did not block the DTCC from going forward with the disciplinary action of getting rid of Alpine from the system. So that's ongoing and we will see how that goes. I think there's a decent chance that Alpine's going to lose, that there will be an expulsion order, but then there will be an appeal, and then there will be a court appeal. So there may be a couple of appeals, so that could take six months, a year, we don't know. Um, and a short squeeze could happen independent of these, or may not happen at all, but these are events that might trigger a short squeeze. So that's one. That's the action in Utah. Then we have a, a D. DC appeal. So there's an appeal in the Court of Appeals in District of Columbia, and that relates to the expedited expulsion of Alpine. And I put expedited in quotation marks because Alpine's been around for 40 years and just from the records has engaged in misconduct for all those 40 years, or at least a good portion of them. So there is a uh, appeal pending in DC this relates to FINRA's ability to go forward with an expedited expulsion. The final briefs were just filed on the 29th last week. I would expect a ruling from this appellate court uh, within 30 days. So within 30 days, we might get a ruling that might permit the disciplinary proceeding for an expedited expulsion of Alpine to go forward in front of FINRA. After that, and let's assume that's granted and they expel Alpine, but Alpine will still have an opportunity to appeal and then appeal in court. So again, might take six months, a year, who knows? And then, you know, a, a short squeeze could happen otherwise, but it's not going to happen immediately based upon the existing cases. So that's my view on Alpine. So even though I think Alpine is likely to encourage positive activity in the stock price of GTII, and that's just my, that's not expert advice, just, just my opinion, don't rely upon it. It's not gonna happen immediately. So with that in mind, I move on to the next part. If there's a short position, then how do we get the shorts to cover? We have to bring a transaction in. And GTII, and if you go to their website, they promote, they're an acquisition company. They present basically the company for someone else to step in and engage in an acquisition, move forward, generate revenue, et cetera. So the way I thought about it is if that's the case, if we could bring a transaction in, that one, it'll be positive because it'll bring revenue to the company. That will be good for the stock. And if there's revenue brought in, that's likely to encourage shorts to cover because they have a fear at that point in time that the value of the company will increase if they get stuck, could cost them a lot of money. So it's likely that if a transaction occurred, and again, this is just my opinion, it's likely if a transaction occurred, that would encourage the stock value to go up also. So the way I said, either way, transaction, short squeeze, whatever, if we can combine the two, great. And if in fact there wasn't a concentrated short position, because I don't know for sure, then the revenue is the only way the company's stock value will go up. So no matter what, a transaction I thought was imperative, notwithstanding the short position. So starting about uh, February 6th, I started to contact the people at GTI directly. Now, before February 6th, I got contacted by numerous people about GTI's management. And their concern was, because some of these people were parties that were trying to engage in transactions with GTII, these deals. And um, I don't know why they re reached out to me, but they did. 
So I had several people reach out to me, multiple people, all with this very similar story that the management of GTII was not engaging in good faith in these transactions. And as I in indicated, someone told me today that literally, and again, I haven't done the due diligence, I haven't been involved in the transactional side, but someone literally told me billions of dollars of revenue are possibly sitting on the sidelines. Um, that could be undertaken by GTII if they did their, what they say they do. So that kind of struck me. Prior to February 6th, all these people are reaching out to me. I have concerns about what GTII is doing. And at the same time, I know what's going on on Alpine because I'm covering it. I did a bunch of videos on it. So I feel comfortable. I know the status of Alpine. So knowing the status of Alpine and seeing that from all these people telling me about a deal's not getting done, I had concerns about what was going on at GTII. So starting February 6th of 2024, I reached out to GTII. So I sent them an email. I think I sent it to the in-house counsel and I sent it to the uh, CEO and to the president of the company. So they're all uh, notified and throughout. So every communication I had with GTII subsequent to February 6th, the CEO, president, and counsel all saw. And in fact, one time I sent a communication to the new counsel for GTII, and that'll, I'll get into that in a second. Um, oh, actually, excuse, excuse me. I didn't send it to the new counsel. I just sent it to the CEO and president, and the new counsel contacted me. So from that, I knew that the board and the president and the CEO were in communication with the new counsel. So I felt comforted that in any discussions I had with new counsel, that the board, CEO, chairman of the board, president, vice chairman, they all knew what was going on. So that gave me comfort in that, that regard. So after hearing all this, uh, I think I also, and I don't remember the exact timing, but I reference it down the road. Uh, I had a conversation with a consultant for GTII. And so this is after I hear from all these sources that basically GTII, and I'm not personally involved in this, but this is what I'm hearing. And I'm hearing from different people. So it gives me, uh, it makes me feel that the story I'm hearing is more credible. But based on that, I contact the consultant to GTI, and I think I heard that the consultant was engaged to help conduct business, engage in the transaction, et cetera. So I reached out to him, had one conversation. Uh, during the conversation, I tried to uh, promote and discuss the issue of engaging in a transaction for the benefit of GTI shareholders. I indicated, I thought that's in the short term, that was the only way to get the stock to advance. And that was the purpose of GTII. So in this conversation I had with this consultant, uh, he expressed no interest in engaging in a transaction, which caused me great concern because if he's just gonna sit around, I don't understand what his purpose was. And as it turns out, apparently, today the CEO who was named is that guy. So the very guy, who I spoke with months ago, who I was, un apparently is a really nice guy, by the way, maybe super qualified, but had no interest in doing a transaction, is now the CEO engaged after I filed the lawsuit, apparently to do something. So I didn't really think that was a credible hire. Maybe he's a great guy. Maybe he'll do a great job. But the fact in my conversation, he had no interest in engaging in the transaction. Um, really was a red flag to me. And today that now he's apparently the COO, in my mind's a joke. So that's that's my feeling. So February 6th, I sent out a letter, an email to GTI management. I basically say, I'm hearing that you're, and I'm paraphrasing on this because there's a lot of, uh, reach. this is just some of my communications with them. I just kind of copied a few of them. I didn't copy all of them, but I had many communications from February 6th 
on. And most of them dealt with the fact I'm hearing from other people that you're not doing anything. You're breaching your fiduciary duty, just sitting on it. Um, I think I put allegations that you're looting the company, you're selling stock, whole litany of things. So on the, on the 2624, February 6th, I send this communication. I lay that stuff out and I say, basically, listen, I'll give you 20 days to kind of tell me what you're doing to try to uh, benefit the company, what transactions are engaging, what's your intentions. And I said, basically, I'll give you to, to February 26th to respond and tell me what's going on. And if not, then, you know, I'd have to consider legal action. So to put my position in perspective, I'm a shareholder of GTII. I've, I have about 30,000 shares or so. Same amount as I had on February 6, 2024. So when I started this, I had that number of shares. And as of today, I have the same number of shares. I thought it would be inappropriate for me to transact anything with regard to my shares unless everybody knew what was going on. So that's kind of why I'm doing this also. So everybody is on the same page as to what is going on. So based on the, the above, I reached out and, you know, we, we had uh, the discussion started two, six, I followed up on two thirteen, followed up on two twenty, followed up on two twenty one, followed up on two twenty three. Basically I'm saying is, listen, I gave you to two twenty six, haven't heard anything. So what's going on on two twenty six, hadn't heard anything. So I'm telling them that this is the information I'm getting. I'm telling everybody is telling me, or a lot of people are telling me a lot more than management that these guys are not doing what they are supposed to be doing and they're not responding to me. So 226, I basically say, I'm going to take legal action. And I, and I gave them a string of, a string of warnings, five, six, seven, various dates, 226 comes nothing. So I send them an email notice that says, the deadline has elapsed. But what happens is on that same day, an investor back east, there's another buddy, somebody else, he and I had no had never spoken to this person. He reaches out to me and he says he's in contact with the with management, or alludes to that he's in contact and management, and says, um, asks me to wait till March 4th to to do anything to give management time. Because I guess he had been in contact with management. And management indicated that they were working on something. So um, on March 1st, so I don't file anything on, on February 26th, 27th, 28th. I wait. On the 1st, I send an email out to management. I indicate that it, because again, I'm trying to be transparent, just like I am here telling everybody what I am doing. I send an email to management saying, you know, investor asked me to hold off uh, till 3-4, so I will. So I agreed to hold off till March 4th to do anything. Before March, and you know, the indication is that something's going to happen. Something positive is going to happen for GTI. They're going to do something, et cetera. Instead of that, on March 3rd, I get contacted by new counsel for GTII, uh, Mr. Fattel. Seems like a very nice gentleman, by the way. Um, and he reaches out and he sends me a letter and he says basically that he's now representing GTII. He's counsel for GTII that on this March 3rd date, so there was a letter actually sent out on March 3rd or dated March 3rd. He says they're responding to my February 6th letter. So it took him four weeks to respond to my letter. In this, in this letter, and I think I addressed it before, he acknowledges it's in the best interest of shareholders to complete a transaction. So that's in writing. Um, he indicates in writing that the target is a separate entity not controlled by GTII and tells me to wait till the 10K comes out and that'll have important details about the transaction. And he also subsequently indicates that he was engaged by GTII January 16th, 2024. And he implied that part of his job was to kind of do cleanup because there maybe were corporate formalities or documents that weren't done properly. He doesn't say that specifically, but he alludes to it. And that's my conclusion from what he says. Um, he also indicates, and we had multiple conversations, and I'll, the next, next one will specifically address that, but he indicates that 
on or before March 31st that they will file their 10K. He repeats that multiple times on multiple conversations. I indicate to him on at least one conversation that March 31st is a Sunday. So if you have to file it on a, you know, a day or two later, that's okay. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. It's not a, not a big deal. It's not a, it's not going to change anything. He reiterates, no, we're going to file it on or before March 31st. Reiterates multiple times. Um, and I would have given him more time, but the fact that he reiterated it mul multiple times, um, to me suggests some intention. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll address that down the road. So I get an email on March 4th from this gentleman. And in the email, it says, we. so I've told you that I gave him multiple opportunities to tell me that they weren't going to file the 10K on time. I'd give him a little extension too. On March 4th in writing, he says, we plan on filing the 10K by 331. And again, that was reiterated multiple times had multiple conversations with him. He never told me otherwise. So he never said, we're not going to file on March 31st or before. I need extra time. He also indicated it would address the transaction. So that also caught my interest. So I'm I'm getting a basically a communication and multiple communications from this attorney. And again, the board is copied on all my communications with this attorney. So everybody knows. What's going on? Um, and basically, he's, he's asking me to wait until March 31st after the 10K before I pursue any legal action. And the reason why he says that is because if we wait till the 10K comes out, it'll have information about what they're doing to consummate a transaction, et cetera. That's what the, that's what the suggestion is. So I agree. I agreed to wait till March 31st. I'm not happy about it because I have concerns about the truthfulness of what I'm hearing, but I have to give them the benefit of the doubt. And again, I believe that if a transaction can be done, and I know a transaction can be done, well, I don't have personal knowledge, but if everybody tells me various entities call me up and say they can do a deal and they've offered a deal, then I presume a transaction can be done with GTII. So with that in mind, I give them more time. Um, on, on uh, March 11th, I get another email from the attorney. It just says, wait for the 10K. Um, on March 13th, I say to the attorney and a copy of the board again, I said, if in fact this is BS, there will be problems. In other words, if they're telling me a story and it's not accurate, I'm going to be pissed and I'm going to be pursuing it. On March 13th, I got a reply back from the attorney, wait for the 10K. On March 15th, I send him another email because I'd heard from other people in between during this time, again, her telling me that what I'm being told by management is not accurate and that in effect, they're, they're not engaging in good faith discussions about any anything. And I'm on, in my, com my communication on March 15th, I say, uh, this is to the attorney, copy to the board, et cetera. You're giving me assurances, and but other people are telling me to the contrary. And as management, and this is my words, so I'm going to put my quote in here. Is management continuing to dick around? Are they looting? Are they doing other th improper things? Are they adhering to corporate formalities? Um, I'm going to, at some point, this is all going to be public. And at that point, I believe counsel indicated that they watch my videos. So again, hi out there to uh, GTI out there. And I indicated at the end, are they really interested in going to court, spending their time in court? March 18th, I indicate that, and because again, I told them I'd wait till March 31st before I filed an action. March 18th, because again, I have contrary feelings. I'm getting reports from some people that are contrary to the reports that counsel or the board is giving back to me, I said, you know, I'm just going to prepare the complaint just in case. I pro promise I'm not going to file it till after March 31st. And I reiterate, all this is going to be made public. March 19th, I reflect on a call I had with counsel. Again, he reassures me on that date 
that management is actively working to consummate a transaction, which again, is contrary to what others are telling me who are, I guess, the other sides of these deals. He asked me again, hold off until March 31st when the 10K comes out. I, I, you know, my intention was I'll stick to my word until March 31st when the 10K comes out. I indicate in a response, if, if the 10K is a ruse or a trick, that would establish fraudulent, fraudulent intent. I demand and ask, ask, demand that a 10K be personally sent to me no later than March 31st. At no time did anyone ever from GTI or any of the representatives ever tell me a 10K would not be filed on or before 31st. And as far as I know, as of today, which is April 9th, 2024, no 10K. March, 3rd, March 21st, another email. Again, I'm hearing different things. I'm telling counsel, telling the board. I'm hearing different language. It's causing me concern. But I'll still hold off until March 31st for the 10K. March 26th, another email, hearing more inconsistent things. Please provide me the insurance information for the officers and directors. And I requested and demanded reasonable access to the books and records of GTII. Because again, I'm not really being, not overly trusting what I'm hearing. If the 10K, 10K turns out to be a sham, litigation will, um, will ensue. And I don't remember where it was, but in one of these communications also, I indicate that as to the consultant, who apparently now is the CEO, in these correspondence, I indicate I was unimpressed with um, my communication with him. At that point in time, he was only a consultant. Now apparently he's the COO. So does that give me any calm that management is doing what they need to do? No. Again, maybe the current new CEO will surprise me, perhaps. But to this point in time, all my surprises with GTI management have been negative surprises. Um, and, you know, CEO is one thing. It's not a C I just saw somebody's point there. Yeah, CEO is the chief operating officer, but ultimately the CEO would have overall control. And in this case, at GTI, the CEO is also the CFO. So he's uh, intimately involved in day-to-day -day operations. And I think, in essence, he controls GTII. And as a matter of fact, in the complaint that I filed, I alleged that he is the alter ego. So there's a legal theory that if someone running a corporation uh, in a un usually undercapitalized and takes it and operates as if it's their own piggy bank, then they don't get the protection of the corporation and they will have personal liability. That's alleged in the complaint, by the way, that I filed. So, I March 21st, I'm, again, I'm hearing different things. March 26th, hearing incon inconsistent things, say at the end, if the 10K turns out to be a sham, litigation will ensue. March 29th, a Friday, end of the day. I waited to the end of the day, Pacific time, because I'm on the Pacific coast, hadn't received a 10K. I kind of thought I would. Uh, if it was going to be filed, because I knew the 31st was a Sunday and they, I knew they had to be working on it or should have been because I've been on their butt for two months. Um, so I was expecting it, but at the end of the day, I hadn't received it. So I said, um, if I don't receive it, and again, I'm trying to give them every opportunity multiple times to do what they said, um, cause I didn't want to act prematurely. And I wanted to give them a fair opportunity. So if I didn't give them a fair opportunity and they didn't act, okay. But if I give somebody 15 chances to do the right thing and every time they don't, then my only conclusion could be that these are not really good actors. So that's my conclusion. My opinion, my personal opinion based upon my interactions and my communications with other. So I, I leave it off on 29th. I say, you know, um, haven't received anything. If I don't get it by the first, I'll assume it's not filed. And if that's the case, by April 4th, I will file a legal action. Now, remember, the original deadline, 
I contacted, contacted them February 6th. The original filing deadline was February 26th. We're now on April, April 4th, I'm telling them. Just get me something. Um, get me a 10K, get me something, uh, or else I'm going to file. And I also demanded that the officers and directors stop selling shares. So they all have a, a share program. So you can set up a, a plan to sell shares regularly. You don't have to physically sh uh, sell the shares, but it happens automatically. And all the officers and directors, at least appeared to be, all the officers and directors were in a, such a plan. And on the 15th of the month, they would sell a whole block of shares, generate some capital to for living purposes, I, I presume. And that including the CEO. The CEO had a plan, and I think on the 15th, so I think on April 15th, it'll happen again. Uh, he would sell, I think, on the order of 65,000 shares each month. And the other officers and directors would, sh would, share, would sell a lesser sum, but also a sum. And the impact is they're working against shareholders, obviously. They're selling, not buying. I don't see any buys. Selling is a negative for the stock price, and it's in a way, it's dilutive also. So I really didn't find that helpful to the shareholders. So I demanded they stop. That's March 29th. So April 4th comes. I said, because I said I'd wait till April 4th. No contact. Nothing happened. But another investor reached out to me and said, you know, they're involved. They said they were engaged in negotiations with the um, management of GTII. I was not involved in those negotiations, but they said they were involved in negotiations. And um, they indicated that GTII management said that they needed until Monday, April 8th to consummate this transaction or something like that. Words to that effect. At least that's what I'm being told. If those aren't the precise, precise words that management used, I don't know because I didn't speak to management. But I wasn't told in essence, hang on for a couple more days to let uh, management consummate this or finish this or whatever. I respond. I say, I'm going to wait to the end of the day on the 5th. And I'm not doing it because management of GTII asked me. I'm doing it because this investor asked me. And I'll wait to the end of the day. The end of the day of the 5th comes, heard nothing. So, and I waited to the end of the day. So in light of that, I tell them, send it again to the attorney, to the board. I say, all right, well, you know, what can I do? I'm going to file an action for punitive damages, disgorgement of the shares. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask that the shares that the management obtained be returned. And for any monies they got, et cetera, and whatever damages I can prove. But because it's the 5th, I'd have to wait to the 8th, which is Monday, which is yesterday, before filing. And I was told by this investor that they were told that on Sunday the 7th, the board of GTI would get together and they would be discussing this transaction. So I presumed if that were really the case, and they were meeting on Sunday that perhaps they would finally see the light and they would leave, that the board would resign, that the CEO would get out, that we would see a complete change of management. Because I thought at that point in time, just kind of based on what you're hearing from me, you could understand how somebody might conclude that this particular management group wasn't acting in the best interests of shareholders. And there is a huge potential here for shareholders. That's why I'm so bullish on GTII and not financial advice. Because I know there's there are transactions out there to be made. And if I were a short and I heard that, I'd be concerned. Even if there wasn't a concentrated short position. If I'm a short and I hear that there's a bunch of deals pending and this company might generate substantial revenues, and that might cost me a lot of money, I'm likely to cover, or some of them are to cover. And if they cover, the price of the stock's going to go. At least that's my, my opinion. So on the 8th, I still don't hear anything. And in the morning of the 8th, I think I, at 11 o'clock Eastern time, so I even gave them a little extra time on the 8th. Did the board meet? Have they resolved anything? Did they not resolve anything? Did they say no? Yes, nothing. Heard, heard nothing 
complete darkness. So at 11 a.m. Eastern, after giving them ample opportunities, filed a lawsuit. And it's on file now out here in California. And it alleges claims for three claims, declaratory relief. Basically, I set out the facts and I say, you know, this doesn't sound like these guys are living up to their fiduciary duty, et cetera. Second claim is for fraud because I've been, I believe that they've misrepresented multiple things. Just let's just talk about the 10K. That that's on the record. I don't know. I have no idea what these guys are doing, by the way. But I would not have put in writing that I was going to do something by a specific date and then not. Uh, because people could rely upon that information, might buy or sell stock. I didn't do that, but people might. They knew this was public information. So I thought that was kind of uh, reckless, to be honest. So I filed it um, and I told them I'd pursue, I, I only asserted it against certain management because I was aware of their, let's say, control over the company, or at least my perceived control of the company. Other officers and directors I haven't named yet, but I indicated that as soon as I find out what their respective roles are or what improper conduct they might have, I'd add them to the lawsuit. Um, but I'm not now because I don't want to guess. I don't want to, you know, uh, add people that may not have responsibility. So I sent him a letter and basically said, let, let all the board of directors know that I'm going to come after all of them. And I also encouraged, encouraged all uh, board members to rat out the other board members. So I said specifically, listen. There's nonsense going on here, at least in my opinion. Uh, if you rat out the other shareholders and I can verify the information you provide me, I'll give you a release. I mean, I'll let you out of the case. Um, so I'm putting that out here now also to any board of directors who are listening to this from GTII, any officers and directors, if you want protection from litigation and you have information of wrongdoing of other members of your management team, reach out to me. I can give you, um, I can give you some level of comfort, and I put it out there. If I can verify it and you're helpful, you're out of the case. So that's where we stand as of today. So what I hope from this point in time, oh, and so today also to bring it forward. They named the CEO after I filed the lawsuit. I presume it's in response to the lawsuit. That CEO, though, happens to be the gentleman who I was very unimpressed with, maybe a great guy. And I don't, I think it's BS. So I'm going to continue with the lawsuit. If they do a deal, fantastic. I would think this would encourage them to get something done, done of some sort. If they if they're not able to function, then they shouldn't be in that position. My concern is that management may be living off the shares, selling out the shares, have no interest in doing a deal, will just pretend. And while they basically, in my mind, and this is just my language, in my mind, I think of that as looting the company. Uh, just sitting there, and it's, it wouldn't be, by the way, the first or last company doing that. Because I, I have concerns about other companies doing that. And in the big picture, you know, we talked about naked shorting and bad hedge funds and bad brokers, all that stuff. And I think that is, and the bad regulators in particular, that is a huge problem. But bad management is a huge problem too. And based upon my dealings with these, these gentlemen and ladies, because it's a mixture of people, I don't think they're up to this job, my opinion. And in my dealings with them, I think it's uh, you know, ridiculous uh, in terms of the representations they made and their lack of ability to follow through. So as of today, I going forward with the litigation, if a deal happens, great. I would think that management hearing this would be encouraged to go out and consummate one of those deals from one of these people or call me up on the phone and say, there's billions of dollars of possible revenue that's available. If they don't do that, 
I think that's kind of telling. And if that's the case, they shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be entitled to the stock. They shouldn't be entitled to the benefits of selling the stock. And the shareholders should be pissed. So I think this is tremendously bullish because I think in the end, no matter what, management will be gone or a transaction will be done. I'm going forward to litigation. I will press these guys as long as necessary. We will see what they do. That brings you up to date. I'm going to do a separate and apart from that. So that kind of brings you literally up to date. I, they haven't contacted me since I filed the lawsuit yesterday. They put out the press release today for the new CEO. Haven't contact, contacted me about that. I presume I'll get contacted at some point in time by counsel. We, we shall see. But in the meantime, I think I hopefully have kind of laid out the, the basis for which or by which I proceeded. I hope you understand how patient I was, how many opportunities I gave these ladies and gentlemen to do uh, what they need to do. You know, in fact, on a, to, this kind of as, as illustrative, illustrative or illustrative of how bad I think a job they're doing. One of the emails I sent to the board and management, they sent and they're, so they're communicating amongst themselves. So one of the board members is, is communicating with their counsel and the CEO. And they sent that to me inadvertently. So they sent me an attorney client privilege document to me, who I'm absolutely opposed to their position. So to me, that was just an example of how inept, incompetent this group is. This is my opinion, but based upon my experience and based upon, I don't know how many people have talked to me, I was guessing maybe a dozen, 10, 12, different people, different uh, avenues, different locations, different interests, but all with the same story about management. So that's where we're all, that's where we are today. Um, if you have any questions, I, I see there are questions, but I haven't, uh, I just been rambling for, you know, the 45 minutes or so. I wanted to lay out the story for you. If you have any questions, please, I'm looking. I'll, I'll certainly answer them. Um, if you later have questions, please put those out there and I will answer them. I'm going to kind of cut this up. I'm going to do another video much shorter so people that weren't watching this can have a understanding of why I did what I did and where we are and what I think, and they could do as it as they may. I know that other people are considering legal action also. So I wasn't the own. So in my communications with other parties, they were indicating their concerns or legal concerns also. Um, hopefully by me filing first, that might kind of keep the, the path cleaner. We, we shall see. Um, I'm hoping, oh, and I did speak to one shareholder because, you know, ultimately I, I, I think this is bullish, but I don't know how it's going to be, how it's going to be treated. But the, the shareholder I thought thought it was going to ultimately be bullish also for the company because again either one thing is going to happen either a you know logically speaking either a deal is going to get done or management's going to be gone new management I have confidence I don't really care who it is but new management who is functioning competent not self-interested and interested in protecting the shareholders will consummate some transaction that will benefit all shareholders I don't know which one but I feel super confident that that will happen. Just my opinion. But again, I've spoken to a lot of people and as of this morning, that's the, the, the uh, intent and the story that people have gotten, uh, have given me. So that's the story. I will continue to keep everybody apprised as I do. Um, it's kind of what I'm trying to do with the legal stuff. I did it with MMTLP. I will do it with this. As we go on, I'll kind of keep you advised of what's going on, good or bad. Um, but again, I think I'm hoping that this will generate a positive result, either a deal or the expulsion of management. So uh, if, if when you see this, you have comments, questions, feel free to put it out. When I put out the video, 
If you have questions, put them out. I will certainly answer them to the extent I can. You can see I'm pretty open about what's going on. So I have nothing, nothing to hide in terms of what I'm doing. Um, everything I said is backed up by what's in the emails and my discussion. So I feel comfortable and I don't really care if GTI, GTII management's watching this again, hello, um, because, you know, I think you have a problem and I think you need to take care of that problem. And I think it's for the benefit of everybody on here who is, uh, following this, this stream. So, so for everybody out there, and I know like everybody's not going to, you know, some people get uncomfortable when legal action is taken. And that's why I kind of tried to lay out the chronology to, to indicate that it wasn't just off the cuff. And I didn't just do it spontaneously. And I gave them, you know, multiple opportunities to take care of this. It's their choice. And if it's their choice, it's uh, our choice to get rid of them. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I will do another video, again, summarizing this later on. If you guys have questions, again, feel free to reach out. Everybody be well out there. Take care. And, you know, um, we, we're going to do well on this one, I have a good feeling. I think this is going to end up well, uh, not financial or legal advice. But I think we've kind of put them in a position where there's, there's not much else they can do but help us. So everybody be well out there. Take care. Have a great day and uh, talk to you soon.